Welcome to Garden Delights. I'm Susan Howington, Family Consumer Science Agent with the Henry County Cooperative Extension, partnership with the University of Georgia Extension. Today we're going to be talking about asparagus. We're also going to be making an asparagus salad with shrimp. It's going to be yummy. Um, you're going to hear from Frank Hancock, our Agriculture and Natural Resource Agent. He's going to talk to you a little bit about gardening and how to do it in a container. Um, it's going to be very interesting, so stay tuned. We'll see you back in just a little bit on Garden Delights. Welcome back to Garden Delight. Today we're going to be talking about asparagus and we're going to be making an asparagus shrimp salad. But let's talk a little bit about asparagus and what I remember in my childhood, we didn't have asparagus a lot. Um, it was six of us in our family and to feed a bunch of asparagus, it was expensive. Um, but what I do remember is Easter time, um, the holidays, is when my mother would uh, have asparagus. So that was like a treat for us. Um, and I, and I still, to this day, think about asparagus as far as the goodness of eating it and the privilege of eating it because it was expensive. But asparagus, this time of year, is the best time to be looking for it. Um, it is going to be at your peak between April and May. And you think about Easter when it falls. Um, it usually falls sometime in, in um, April, sometimes in March. But that's our peak time, and you'll see it in the grocery store, too, a lot cheaper. So be looking out for it if you're shopping at your grocery store. But it's such a good vegetable for us. It has no cholesterol. It's fat-free. Sodium, as far as uh, very low sodium. Um, but it has some good nutrients in it, and it has a really good nutrient as far as a vitamin, vitamin K, which helps us with blood clots. So I would say this is perfect as far as what you're looking for in a vegetable. But it also has a little bit of vitamin A and a vitamin C. It has a little bit of fiber, which also is good for us because we know that fiber will re reduce the risk of heart disease. And so we're always looking for a way to, to do that for our bodies. Um, when you're looking for that asparagus in the grocery store, or even if you're picking it, you want to make sure you're picking it before the top of the tip part of it comes out because it's going to make a flower. And they say asparagus is in like the lily family of like the onions, the leeks, and the garlic. So we know that once it matures, it will make a flower. So we don't want to get anything that's over mature. So when you're looking at the grocery store, look for a bright green. Make sure that it has a good feel to it. It's, it's, it's firm. It's not limpy. Um, because if it's real limpy looking, it's probably going to be real stringy and it's not going to be really good to eat also. Um, and when you're looking for it, um, when you're getting ready to select it and eat it, you know, and, and asparagus can be eaten raw or cooked. Um, there's a woody part to it, and it's the part that comes out of the ground. Um, so a part of that fourth that section of that asparagus, you're looking to take that part off because it's going to be really woody, and you're not going to want to eat that part of it, and it's also stringy. And a lot of times when you open asparagus in a can, that's what you get sometimes that's stringy, and it's yucky to me um, when you get that part of it. So when you're looking at it, make sure, and you can buy it fresh, so this is the perfect time to buy that fresh asparagus. So be looking for that um, and look at your stalks. About a medium-sized stalk is what you want. Now I had this asparagus in some water and um, so it has just been picked out of a garden locally right here. Um, when you're looking at that asparagus, getting ready to pick it, um, you want it to be out of the ground, about eight inches out of the ground. So that's when you're saying it's almost ready to be picked is when you're about eight inches out of the ground. You also, when you store it, it's going to store in your refrigerator for about three to four days. Um, but I say, t you know, if you can, cook it before three to four days. But once you get it, and I have it in water, but you want to put a, a paper towel or a, some kind of towel around it, a moist towel around the base of it, and then you're going to store this in your refrigerator in some kind of bag. Um, it also freezes very well. Um, you have to blanch it first um, to do this, but it does freeze very well. If you want more information on how to freeze it, please uh, let us know and call us and we'll be glad to tell you step by step how to freeze it. But as you can see, this is a wonderful vegetable for us. It's got all kind of nutrients that we need for our body. So if you have it on your list, that's wonderful. You don't put it on your grocery list, buy it soon because it's at its peak in the grocery stores. 
But when we come back, we're going to hear from Frank. He's going to be talking about that container garden, and then we'll be cooking up the asparagus shrimp salad. So we'll see you back in just a little bit on Garden Delights. Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about growing vegetables in containers, and we're going to look at a couple of options for things we can have for containers. One of the important things that you've got to do, though, is you've got to understand what you're putting in this container to, to grow the plant with. I've done a little bit of research on some of these products that are available at the, at the stores. In fact, we uh, sent six different samples off of some of those things that say they're garden soil. Uh, main ingredient in most of them is, uh, is bark and, and wood products, but uh, you, you need to understand the characteristics of them. Uh, we did the soil samples on them. The pH range goes from like 4.4 to 7.2, so you need to know which one you're dealing with to figure out what you might have to add to it to get the plant to grow right. Some of them did not hold water very well. The water ran right through them, and in about two days, some of them dried out. Some of them, on the other hand, it was 10 days before they dried out. So your watering schedule and all that is going to be dependent on what you select to uh, grow these, these plants in. So you just need to be aware of that. What we're going to look at here for a few minutes is we're going to look at some some five gallon bucket semi self watering containers that we can use. The first one we'll look at here, and we're not. You, you can get these at at most any store, um, so we're not saying it's got to be any particular bucket. But um, you start off with a bucket with a lid on it, then you can take that lid and you can cut it out to be the same diameter as the three inch level down here in the bottom of your bucket. So you got to have a saw and a drill and uh, to, to get this particular one out. So there's one component of it. Then we, we cut four pieces of drainage tile that's got the, the perforated holes in it so water can run, run through them. And we set those in the bottom of the bucket, and that's going to hold this up off of the bottom. Then we take a, a piece of hose. Let me pull this piece of hose out here. We take a piece of hose, and we just ran a screw through it. And that screw is to keep it from pulling out of the bucket, so it can't come through. So this particular hose is uh, one inch outside diameter, three quarters inside diameter. So we took our hole saw and we we bored a, a one inch hole to put it in. We we'll probably put a little little caulk around it or something to keep it from leaking as, as we go along. Then this screw just keeps it from pulling out of the bucket. So so I can take this and I can install it then in the bucket through that hole and it comes out like so. Then I've got my four pieces that are sitting in here. If we turn this up where we can see what we're doing a little bit so that uh, you've got uh, those pieces in there. Then we're going to add our piece that we cut out of the top that's got the holes in it. The, the theory here, these roots are going to come down. They're going to find their way through these holes, and they're going to reach this little two-and-a-half-inch reservoir of water underneath. So I put this in, add my soil mixture to it, my, my fertilizer, uh, get everything like I want it. I'm going to set this up. Usually we'll, we'll talk about setting it up on a, a cinder block out in the, in the yard. And uh, then I'm going to take a milk carton, and I'm going to put that one-inch hole in that milk carton, and I can insert that. I can insert that in there. So now what happens is when I water my plant and I water it from the top like I always would, it soaks down through, the excess comes down in the bottom, it runs through this hose, goes into the milk carton. What that does is 
obviously it tells me when my bucket is to capacity because it's running out, but any nutrients that get washed out of this uh, in the meantime are going to go into this container. Then I come back when next time it's time to water it, I take my container and I pour those nutrients back back through the plants again. So it's kind of a, a system here where I'm I'm not losing my my nutrients that I put in from being washed out of the pot. So that's one system. This bucket and and the hose and everything that goes with this is about an eight dollar project here and it like I said it takes a saw and uh, so we bought the bucket we bought the top for the bucket and we used a saw so then we started looking at at other ways to do this and uh, so we did the same thing by using two buckets so in this scenario we take a bucket we come up three inches from the bottom, we bored our one inch hole, we put our screw through the back of the tube like we did before. Now we've got the hose coming out to go into the uh, milk container. Then we take another bucket and we put the holes in the bottom of this bucket. So now I've eliminated several things. I've eliminated having to cut the center out of the top. I've eliminated having to cut the drainage tile to hold it up in the bottom and so then I just insert this bucket into the other one. I put my dirt in it. Same thing happens. I'm still catching material. And um, so now you got the cost of two buckets. Uh, the buckets are about like $3 a piece or in that neighborhood somewhere. But in this particular case, we just went by a construction site and asked them if we could have some buckets. So I didn't, these buckets didn't cost us anything. So I've only got the cost of the, of the, the hose in, in this one. So, and it'll work the same way. You can still, still use your milk carton to catch nutrients. Now, the, the third way that you can deal with these buckets, and of course the important thing I'm not pointing out too much here, I've got a reservoir in the bottom down here that is two and a half inches deep. So the water stays in there. So the roots can come down and they can get the water. So if I've got material in here that I know drains out in a couple of days where I would have to water every day, I might be able to go every three or four days because there's water left in here that the plant can get. And then I just, I'll, I'll figure out, you know, what my interval should be on water. So in this case, I only drilled a 5 sixteenths hole here for a drain. I'm not collecting any nutrients in this. This is my, my poor man's version of this bucket. My other bucket, I put the holes in the bottom of it. I put it together. I do the same thing. I water it. It has a reservoir down here that holds some water, but it, don't, it just simply, when it overflows, it just runs out and I'm not trying to collect any, any nutrients that might run out of it. So that's that's three different ways you can deal with five gallon buckets you can get five gallon buckets from any of your of your stores lowe's home depot walmart's probably got some ace hardware everybody's got five gallon buckets but there's also a lot of five gallon buckets out there at construction sites that are, are getting thrown away that you know had things in them Obviously, you don't want to get a five-gallon bucket that had herbicide in it. That might not be the right thing to grow plants in, but, but things like paint and plaster and that kind of stuff, they'll clean out pretty good and you can use them. So, so that is what we do, a self-watering container that allows us to not water as often if we're using material that the water drains through Readily, like like some of the garden soils that have a lot of uh, a lot of bark and forest products in them don't absorb water as well as dirt. You don't want to use dirt in here because for a couple of reasons it'll be really heavy to move around and it will cake up. Uh, you know our our dirt has got a pretty high percentage of clay in it, so so just using regular soil in here would not be the right thing to do. You want to use one of your soil mixes, one of your garden soils, 
uh, that are out there on the market. Just be aware of the characteristics of your particular garden soil because you may have to add a few nutrients and add some lime or whatever depending on the pH. You know, in a previous show, we showed you how to mix up a, a mix to go that you would use in this bucket that will, will carry a plant through. You can grow probably, in de uh, probably determinate tomato plants will grow well in this bucket. Uh, indeterminate plants, you might need to get a little bit larger container to, to grow them because they grow and get bigger all summer. But determinate varieties of tomatoes will grow well in this situation. Um, you know, we, we, we planted our, uh, our peas in our last show and they're, they're coming up now in that container. We've got kale that's growing in a container. Uh, if you recall one of our previous shows, we grew some Irish potatoes in the container. And uh, all of those things, you can grow almost anything you want to in a container. Some things like corn or okra, things that get really tall, I would probably avoid putting them in a container just for the, just because of the way they grow. But uh, most of your vegetables, all of your greens, tomatoes, uh, Irish potatoes, sweet potatoes, you can grow them in containers. Susan today is talking about asparagus. Uh, I'm talking about containers, but we're gonna go see what Susan is fixing. We're talking about asparagus today, and we're gonna be making asparagus shrimp salad, and it's gonna be yummy. First, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and chop up our asparagus. I talked early about getting the woody part off that asparagus and that's what I've done so far. Also, it's very important, asparagus grows in the ground, just like any fruit or vegetable, you have to wash it. So I've already washed the um, asparagus and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dice it and I'm gonna kind of cut it at an angle because I like the look of it. It's a pretty look when you cut it at an angle instead of straight off. So I'm gonna kind of cut it. And what I'm trying to do is to get about a one inch look is what I'm trying to do on the asparagus. Now what's important is I really want the tips of those asparagus to show because that's the prettiest part of it. So um, what I'm gonna do is try to chop up as many as I can before I add it to the skillet to stir fry just a little bit. So I'm gonna do another group and then I'm gonna try to work it into it. Um, and you can cut it however you want to, but I really think it, it's really pretty. Um, and you'll know too when you're cutting, if it still has some woody part to it, you'll know too that um, you'll probably want to discard that part of it because that's something you do not want to eat. Um, I don't care if it's, um, if it's raw or if it's cooked. You'll want to make sure that you don't eat that woody part because I can tell you, you're not going to eat it. You're going to end up spitting it out. So that's a good group. And this is, by the way, a bunch of um, asparagus. And normally when you buy at the grocery store, it is about a bunch. On the average, it's going to be about 20 of them, um, give or take, but that's what you're looking for. I'm going to go ahead and crank up my uh, griddle area so I can go ahead and have it ready. Now, the first thing we're going to do to keep it healthy, this is about three tablespoons of vegetable broth. So I'm going to go ahead and add this to my skillet, and that's what I'm going to move and stir around with this um, asparagus. So I'm going to go ahead and add this asparagus right now to this part, and I'm going to keep chopping. Whoops, I just lost one, I think. Um, let's see if I can grab that one. And like I said, it's expensive, so you want to make sure that you are using every bit of that as asparagus. But this is the peak time, and this is the cheapest time that you can buy asparagus. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this up and add this to the rest of it. And while you're um, cutting this up, you want to kind of keep an eye on it. You want to um, cook it for about um, five minutes. You're just trying to get it to where it's cooked, um, you know, where it has a beautiful green color, but it's not totally done. Um, it's got a little crunch to it. It's not limpy like when you buy it out of a can. And I'm trying my best to leave some of those tips because I really want to leave those because that makes it just really, really nice looking while you're stir frying. So I'm going to add this to it. And you can see the broth is already heated up. I'm just going to kind of move this around. And we're also going to add a pound of shrimp. And the recipe is going to tell you if you use frozen shrimp, it's very important that you towel dry that shrimp because you want to make sure you don't have a bunch of water because it can really make it where it runs the, um, 
the salad because you don't want a lot of that in your salad as far as water goes. So we're gonna try to do that. And so right now, I'm just keeping it low fat. You could use oil, but I'm gonna use that vegetable broth and make it a little bit healthier. Um, so we're gonna cook this for about five minutes. And while this is cooking, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what we're gonna also add in, um, to this salad to make it even tastier. Now, this is already mixed up and I'm gonna tell you what's in it. Um, this is three tablespoons of lemon juice, two tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, and you're gonna get, use about four teaspoons of garlic, and you're going to add a little bit of um, salt and a little bit of pepper, and also you're going to add one teaspoon of honey, and then you're gonna whisk this around, and this is what you're going to add to your salad. Now to add all the ingredients that we're gonna be using today, um, we're going to do this about five minutes. The last four minutes, I'm gonna add the shrimp. We're also going to add a whole chopped up tomato. And then we also have some uh, parsley. And this is about three teaspoons of parsley that we're gonna add also. And you can see this is looking really good. It's getting a beautiful green color to it. And we just wanna keep moving it around so it can cook a little bit. And we're gonna end up putting the salad all together and tossing it all together. And we're gonna put it on a bed of lettuce. Um, and if you didn't wanna put it on lettuce, you don't have to, but we are gonna put it on a little bed of lettuce. So we're gonna keep stirring this around to make sure it is cooking thoroughly. And um, we're going to add a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper to it. Um, but right now, I'm getting close, but I'm going to add a little bit of the shrimp because the shrimp is cool, but I want it to be warm also with this. So we're gonna add a little bit of shrimp to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the shrimp and I'm gonna go ahead and add it to it. And this is medium sized shrimp. If you want smaller, you could use smaller, but um, I use the a uh, little bit larger size I really love shrimp. So that's the reason why we're using the bigger size. So I'm just gonna kind of mingle this in Heat the shrimp up a little bit so it's also warm when it's put on top of the salad. But doesn't this look good? The colors look really good together. I'm gonna go ahead and salt just, just a little bit while I've got this going. And I'm also gonna put a little bit of cracked pepper. If I got the top off, it would help, wouldn't it? Let's see. Get a little bit, I love cracked pepper. It's just seasoning it up really good. It also makes it really nice and tasty. So use your little bit of cracked pepper because we want to make it seasoned up a little bit, bit. And it's not a whole lot of season on it, but what's going to be nice is when I put the dressing part on, that's what's going to make it taste even better. So like I said, for about five minutes, and we got the shrimp. You can tell it's heating up again, just to get it a little bit. And also the, the vegetable broth is gonna also dissipate a little bit too. You know, it, it's not a whole lot and it'll soak up in your um, asparagus because you know, it's just a liquid that's gonna soak up. So you're not gonna have a whole lot of the broth left. So we're about there for that five minutes. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to take this we're going to end up tossing it in a bigger bowl with all the other ingredients. So I'm going to switch around. I'm going to put this bowl down below. And I'm going to bring my other big bowl up top. And this is looking so good and it smells really good. And it's amazing the pretty color that you can see on a vegetable once it hits the heat. It looks really, really good. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to go ahead and put this in my bowl. And I want a bigger bowl because I want to be able to toss it all together. And this cools it down just a little bit too. So, you know, Frank's talking about the container garden and if you don't have a lot of space, this is a perfect way to plant those tomatoes or even if it's um, 
some kind of vegetable that you're looking for to growing this summer, it's a perfect way to do that um, in a container garden. We're going to add our one tomato also to this. And we're going to add our three teaspoons of parsley to it. Just add a little color to it, a little taste to it also. So I'm just going to toss this around because I want to make sure I get that good dressing that I made up earlier. And like I said, I love my garlic. And so I definitely put the garlic into the salad. Um, and you can see this looks, if you could smell it, it smells really, really good. It's a beautiful color for the summertime. Um, just putting this all together, it's going to be very low in calories too. About five spears of broccoli is about 20 calories. So you can see that you could eat a lot of spears of bro uh, asparagus. I knew I was going to say this. Asparagus, that you could eat a lot of asparagus and it's very low in calories. So just remember that um, asparagus is something you want to put on your list to buy very soon. But doesn't that look beautiful? When we come back, Frank's going to come and taste it. So we'll see you back in just a little bit on Garden Delights. Welcome back to Garden Delights. We have Frank with us and we're going to be eating asparagus shrimp salad. You ready, Frank? I'm ready. I'm ready. Asparagus shrimp salad. That's, that's what I was hoping for. You were hoping for. Now, this is going to be on Remain lettuce, and I just about knocked your shrimp off, didn't hey, I? Hey, that looks good. We didn't want to travel off, do we? How's that? I won't let it get far. All right. All right. Let's try. We'll get me a little bit. Is... And I'm looking forward to it. And I know you were eating a piece of raw earlier, but this is a little cooked now. Mm -hmm. But it's got a good, nice little crunch to it. Yeah, it does. It's nice and tender. You know, the top part is the best. It is. That is really good. And I love shrimp anyway, so. Mm -hmm. Asparagus is supposed to be the vegetable of the gods, you know. That, that's what they called it. Well, I can see that. The Roman Emperor Augustus, you know, he had a an asparagus fleet. That was the name of it. And it was just for going and getting the best asparagus and bringing it back for them to eat. To bring it back and to eat. I can see that. And In fact, he coined the phrase, uh, mm -hmm. faster than cooking asparagus. And that's what he used to say when he wanted something done in a hurry. Want it done faster than cooking asparagus. Well, I hope I know that we don't use that much anymore, you know. But this is really, really tasty. The asparagus has a little crunch to it, which I really like. It's not soggy. Um, check out our website to see the recipe. And we'll see you back next time on Garden Delights. You know, the two asparagus walking down the street.